We continue today with chapter 29. Seek not outside yourself. Seek not outside yourself, for it will fail and you will weep each time an idol falls. Heaven cannot be found where it is not, and there can be no peace excepting there. Each idol that you worship when God calls will never answer in his place. There is no other answer you can substitute and find the happiness his answer brings. Seek not outside yourself, for all your pain comes simply from a futile search for what you want, insisting where it must be found. What if it is not there? Do you prefer that you be right or happy? Be you glad that you are told where happiness abides and seek no longer elsewhere. You will fail, but it is given you to know the truth and not to seek for it outside yourself. No one who comes here must, but must still have hope, some lingering illusion or some dream that there is something outside of himself that will bring happiness and peace to him. If everything is in him, this cannot be so, and therefore by his coming he denies the truth about himself and seeks for something more than everything, as if a part of it were separated off and found where all the rest of it is not. This is the purpose he bestows upon the body, that it seek for what he lacks and give him what would make himself complete. And thus he wanders aimlessly about in search of something that he cannot find, believing that he is what he is not. The lingering illusion will impel him to seek out a thousand idols and to seek beyond them for a thousand more. And each will fail him, all excepting one, for he will die and does not understand the idol that he seeks is but his death. Its form appears to be outside himself. Yet does he seek to kill God's Son within and prove that he is victor over him. This is the purpose of every idol, for this the role that is assigned to it, and this the role that cannot be fulfilled. Whenever you attempt to reach a goal in which the body's betterment is cast as major beneficiary, you try to bring about your death. For you believe that you can suffer lack, and lack is death. To sacrifice is to give up, and thus to be without, and to have suffered loss. And by this giving up is life renounced. Seek not outside yourself. The search implies you are not whole within and fear to look upon your devastation, but prefer to seek outside yourself for what you are. Idols must fall because they have no life, and what is lifeless is a sign of death. You came to die, and what would you expect but to perceive the signs of death you seek? No sadness and no suffering proclaim a message other than an idol found that represents a parody of life, which in its lifelessness is really death, conceived as real and given living form. Yet each must fail and crumble and decay, because a form of death cannot be life, and what is sacrifice cannot be whole. All idols of this world were made to keep the truth within from being known to you, and to maintain allegiance to the dream that you must find what is outside yourself to be complete and happy. It is vain to worship idols in the hope of peace. God dwells within, and your completion lies in Him. No idol takes His place. Look not to idols. Do not seek outside yourself. Let us forget the purpose of the world the past has given it. 
for otherwise the future will be like the past and but a series of depressing dreams in which all idols fail you one by one and you see death and disappointment everywhere. To change all this and open up a road of hope and of release in what appeared to be an endless circle of despair, you need but to decide you do not know the purpose of the world. You give it goals it does not have, and thus do you decide what it is for. You try to see in it a place of idols found outside yourself, with power to make complete what is within by splitting what you are between the two. You choose your dreams, for they are what you wish, perceived as if it had been given you. Your idols do what you would have them do, and have the power you ascribe to them, and you pursue them vainly in the dream, because you want their power as your own. Yet where are dreams but in a mind to sleep? And can a dream succeed in making real the picture it projects outside itself? Save time, my brother. Learn what time is for. And speed the end of idols in a world made sad and sick by seeing idols there. Your holy mind is altar unto God. And where he is, no idols can abide. The fear of God is but the fear of loss of idols. It is not the fear of loss of your reality. But you have made of your reality an idol, which you must protect against the light of truth. And all the world becomes the means by which this idol can be saved. Salvation thus appears to threaten life and offer death. It is not so. Salvation seeks to prove there is no death, and only life exists. The sacrifice of death is nothing lost. An idol cannot take the place of God. Let him remind you of his love for you, and do not seek to drown his voice in chants of deep despair to idols of yourself. Seek not outside your father for your hope. For hope of happiness is not despair. And from the workbook, what is salvation? Salvation is a promise made by God that you would find your way to Him at last. It cannot be but kept. It guarantees that time will have an end and all the thoughts that have been born in time will end as well. God's word is given every mind which thinks that it has separate thoughts and will replace these thoughts of conflict with the thought of peace. The thought of peace was given to God's son the instant that his mind had thought of war. There was no need for such a thought before for peace was given without opposite, and merely was. But when the mind is split, there is a need of healing. So the thought that has the power to heal the split became a part of every fragment of the mind that still was one, but failed to recognize its oneness. Now it did not know itself, and thought its own identity was lost. Salvation is the undoing in the sense that it does nothing, failing to support the world of dreams and malice. Thus, it lets illusions go. By not supporting them, it merely lets them quietly go down to dust. And what they hid is now revealed, an altar to the holy name of God, whereon his word is written, with the gifts of your forgiveness laid before it, and the memory of God not far behind. Let us come daily to this holy place and spend a while together. Here we share our final dream. It is a dream in which there is no sorrow, for it holds a hint of all the glory given us by God. The grass is pushing through the soil. The trees are budding now 
and birds have come to live within their branches. Earth is being born again in new perspective. Night has gone, and we have come together in the light. From here we give salvation to the world, for it is here salvation was received. The song of our rejoicing is the call to all the world that freedom is returned, that time is almost over, and God's Son has but an instant more to wait until his Father is remembered. Dreams are done. Eternity has shined away the world, and only heaven now exists at all. Lesson 231 Father, I will but to remember you. What can I seek for, Father, but your love? Perhaps I think I seek for something else, something I have called by many names. Yet is your love the only thing I seek or ever sought? For there is nothing else that I could ever really want to find. Let me remember you. What else could I desire but the truth about myself? This is your will, my brother, and you share this will with me and with the One as well, who is our Father. To remember Him is heaven. This we seek, and only this is what it will be given us to find. Amen. Oh,